So, I wanted to speak about um, a wild edible that we discovered in the winter a couple years ago when I think it was after our first real real hunting season of mushrooms and I was getting a bit sad that there was going to be nothing to hunt until for many months until the spring. Well, apart from winter oysters. But, but I don't even that. think we knew about them at the time. So anyways, I one day discovered that all coniferous needles, is that how I would say it? Yeah. Coniferous needles? Are edible, with the exception of the yew tree <laughs> family needles. Um, yeah, you don't want those ones. But every other kind of pine needle is uh, is edible. And interestingly, they all have slightly different... Well, actually, they Bunch all have of... radically different tastes and flavors. And smells, yeah, quite. Um, so what I did want to share was one day um, a, a good way to kind of find out which ones you like and don't like. Um, what we did one day was we just took some trimmings of a variety of maybe six or eight different different kinds of trees and um, we came home and we brewed tea out of each and every one and had a little tea testing sampling party. Yeah, which actually was a good way of was a good idea and a very good way of figuring out which ones we did like the taste of. Yeah, and which ones we didn't. And I'm sure there were some other things that we did too. But anyways, um, what else did I want to say? Well, because I don't even know the type of tree of the ones that we really liked. <laughs> so it's worth identifying what a yew tree is so that you don't eat yew by mistake in England it's yew trees are normally in graveyards I don't know the history why I could find out but that's just historical um, but also a side note my dad made some wooden bowls out of yew and then realised that you couldn't use them as fruit bowls because <laughs> yew is poisonous right anyway um, it's sad I think you're using them for car keys and other stuff. Right. So, anyway, the reality of this is, is if you find out what a yew tree is and then go to your local pine forest and <laughs> pick a few, whilst we don't know the name of the one we really Our favorite, like, we yeah. do know what it looks like. You've identified it well. It's flat. Yes. Flat pine needles or flat needles. Yeah. So, yeah, do a bit of experimentation. We've tried a few things. We've tried, like, the Scots Pines. We've tried the Douglas Fir, which is the Christmas tree-type tree. We've tried multiple. Um, but what I was going to say is you've now, at this point, developed the ideal process. For, I have. Develop, you know, for capturing them, which I think is worth talking yeah, about. Yeah, and that is the next thing I'm going to talk about. Um... So, the only other thing I was going to say about the yew trees is that, for me, they're always a little bit easy to identify in that they're, it's more of like a plump, robust um, kind of a needle on them. Yeah. Whereas all the rest are usually kind of flatter and drier kind of looking. Um, also, they tend not to be like a tree as well. Like, they, they don't... Yeah. Like, a conifer looks like a Christmas tree, or a pine, Scots pine, looks like a big stick with a thing on the top. The ewes look a bit more bush-like, don't they, tend to? Yeah, I I'm, a, I'm a, did not do a great job at retaining some of this knowledge, because it was a couple of years ago that I did some reading about it. Um, but, there's, it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, anyways... I'm yeah. sure a lot of this needs to be edited out. I'm doing a terrible job here. No, but, fine. Um, so, what I did also want to share, though, is in the process of... Once you've sort of uh, figured out which 
which types or type or types that you fancy over others. I wanted to talk about storage now um, because this was a bit of a process for me. Um, so first I used to just leave them all in a big paper bag in the oven and I'd leave them for a week or two and they would sort of just you know naturally dehydrate dry out and then I would shake the bag and all the needles would fall off into the bottom of the bag and then I could fish out um, the larger bits of like stick and stem and that was a pretty 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 good way because otherwise you're gonna sit there forever trying to pluck which is what we did the first which time. is what we started out by doing then I um, I thought well I could speed up this process by turning the oven on super duper low and then just heating it a little bit and then turning it off and kind of letting them dry slash dehydrate and then I think it was just by accident that one time I forgot to turn the oven back off and I slightly toasted these pine needles um, these branches and lo and behold those were the best tasting ones so now what I do is once um, rather than just straight up dehydrating them or drying them and then putting them in a jar I will go the extra step of actually toasting these these pine needles um, or branches and so you're kinda killing you're you're getting them off the stem it's a lot easier when they're dry but yes actually giving them a light toasting you'll you'll see the oil kinda come out a little bit and you will smell the smell is very pleasant very fragrant and then just letting them cool completely and then I just um, tip them into a like glass mason jar and um, no problem or you can keep them as long as you like and then the final uh, bonus to really drying, getting them super duper dry um, and into toasted level is that then what the final thing that I you pretty much always do when I'm using them in food is I um, I grind them in a spice grinder so that they go to a powder. So if you still have some moisture in those needles, you're not you're going to get a chunky, um, stringy, uh, yeah, not a very pl pleasant texture, um, and you're never going to get like a fine powder, but by drying them or toasting them, you can get a nice, super fine powder, and you're going to get the most flavor out of that as well, in my experience. Yeah, it kind of messes up your blender as well if they're a bit damp. Yeah, it starts to get sticky in there. Um, yeah, a bit of sap on the... Yeah, and it's hard to clean, so... So, just, I guess, by trial and error and um, a few many tries at it. But that's a staple in our kitchen, is we do not ever... Well, I, like, I do not like to ever not have pine needles in the kitchen or in my pantry because um, I use them for quite quite a lot of things and uh, I suppose you'll need to stay tuned to find out what <laughs> um, but today I think I did share a recipe for chocolate pine needle ice cream which is pretty delightful um, we may well be having some later excellent if it's frozen enough yeah and the um, another beautiful thing about this is you can collect them year round, which makes me quite happy. Hello. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to give, uh, going to share a kind of a mini recipe because it's really, I don't think anyone by any stretch of the imagination could really consider this a recipe. But it is something that I do pretty much on a weekly basis, as everybody knows how much we love ice cream. And uh, I do eat pretty well a cone a day. 
Um, it's rare that I miss a day. <laughs> um, so, well, and actually I should mention, I have been doing that for over five years now. That's not nothing. No, that is true. That's, I feel like that's an achievement. <laughs> um, so, one of the things that I like to do quite often in order to keep my flavors interesting, because how else would I not be sick of ice cream by this point, but equally because I do find um, joy and fun in this, is I like to uh, create some of my own ice cream flavors. But I'm doing this a slightly, quite a lazy way. I'm not making my own ice cream. I am, more often than not, using vanilla as the base. Uh, sometimes on the occasion I will use chocolate as the base. I mean, you could use any flavor as the base, but those are my go-tos. So today, I thought I would share, since I've gone into the pantry and dug out one of our wild edibles, I thought I would share my pine needle ice cream recipe. Um, so normally I would do this one with vanilla, but today I'm going to do it with chocolate. And yeah, I guess just for variety's sake, it's it's nice to change it up. Um, and it does go quite, quite well with chocolate. So I have taken my carton of chocolate ice cream out of the freezer. If I'm like actually on the ball and planned in advance, I would put it in the fridge for for a little while, but right now I'm kind of did not plan in advance and I'm trying to just do this the speedy way. So I sort of just take out like not big round scoops, but like thin sheet like scoops. And um, I'll put like a layer in the bottom of a large bowl and then I'm going to layer in some of my pine needles, and then a layer of ice cream, etc. Uh, until I'm done with my ice cream and I've added enough of my wild edible, um, enough pine needle that my heart is content. So yes, I have no measurements for this whatsoever. <laughs> so actually the first thing I need to do is I am going to grind up some of my pine needles that I have here. If I had to guess how much I just put in this little grinder, I would say a good quarter of a cup, maybe a third of a cup, let's call it that. And maybe, yeah, that was a little bit generous. A bit shy on the two liters of chocolate, yeah, per two liters of chocolate ice cream here because I've already dipped into the chocolate and had a cone before making this flavor. So I'm going to, I'm just using like a really cheap spice, is it a spice grinder or a coffee grinder? It's a coffee grinder, but I use it for spices. That's why I'm confused. Um, I do not put coffee in this, but I do use it for spices when I don't want to use a mortar and pestle. So this is a great little tool for, I basically want to make powder out of this pine, these pine needles. So just going to buzz it and shake it. of chocolate, yeah, per two liters of chocolate ice cream here because I've already dipped into the chocolate and had a cone uh, before making this flavor. So I'm going to, I'm just using like a really cheap um, spice, is it a spice grinder or a coffee grinder? It's a coffee grinder, but I use it for spices. That's why I'm confused. Um, I do not put coffee in this, but I do use it for spices when I don't want to use a mortar and pestle. So this is a great little tool for, I basically want to make powder out of this pine, these pine needles. So just going to buzz it and shake it. So I have quite a, quite a lovely powder here, and I will also explain how I get such a lovely fine powder, because I didn't start out by getting a lovely fine powder, um, but I'll get back to that in a, in a little bit. So I'm just sprinkling a little layer of this pine needle dust 
next on top of my first sort of layer of ice cream. And now I'm going to scoop another sort of thin-ish sheet layer. It just, the reason why I'm saying these kind of layers is because I find it makes it um, easier to mix because it can be quite a workout. And depending on how soft you've let your ice cream get. Oh, maybe I should also mention, it's not a good idea to let this turn to complete soup, the ice cream. Otherwise, you will be left with a solid brick in your freezer afterwards. So, soft enough that it's it's a real workout to, um, to mix together. And so again, just to make that part a bit easier, this is why I do these layers. So I'm going to sprinkle some more green dust on there. It is, look at that color, as Jamie would say. So I'm just, I've got one layer of chocolate ice cream, a layer of pine needle, two layers of ice cream, another layer of pine needle. This is my third layer of chocolate ice cream and I just added the last of my pine needles. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess I just kind of divided the tub into three. You don't need to do 10 layers. Um, and I'll just top it off with, I've got another scoop and a half of ice cream here. And I just remembered the most common use for my toothbrush. Not sure how I didn't think of this, but it is uh, cleaning mushrooms. Um, yeah, I have this little, actually it's, a, it's even in the shape of a mushroom, little bristly brush that I bought, God, I don't know how many years ago. But honestly, I use the toothbrush more than any other tool for cleaning mushrooms. In fact, that would be a great tool. A toothbrush would be fantastic to carry with you in the bush um, for getting dirt off that then doesn't get all rolling around your mushrooms in your bag or in your basket. Um, yeah, along with my, my knife, I should start carrying a toothbrush. The ideas that come to you when you're mixing up pine needle ice cream. So I, like I said, I don't want to let this get too soupy soft and take all the air out of the ice cream, but I'm going to mix it sort of the best I can until basically my forearm is extremely tired. And then I just, uh, I have a number of kind of old ice cream containers that I save that I can decant this back into. And you will notice that the texture is a little maybe less airy and fluffy than you uh, than you would normally scoop right out of a tub. It'll be a little bit more dense, but actually that's kind of, I like my ice cream to be rock hard, so, so it kind of works out. So I'm just going to put this all into this container and chuck it back in the freezer to fully, fully freeze again. So, you know, it's just after dinner now. I, I probably wouldn't have a cone with this one tonight. I'd probably leave it till tomorrow. But if I did this earlier in the day, for sure, it would have been hard enough for, for tonight. So there you have it. Uh, coniferous needle chocolate ice cream.